and looking forward to a terrific night tonight. <laughs> Wonderful to be here at the Chelsea Football Club for our uh, second division football show, thanks to Swiss Locker for Game Face. My name is Dan Lonigan, and of course with me every week a couple of uh, interesting fellows, but we do like them. Tony Blackford, welcome Blackers, and also welcome to Chris Holcomb. And our two guests tonight from the Chelsea Football Club, Sean Foster, one of their star players, and a former best and fairest here in 2017, and he did play under Jason Ackermanis at North Albury, Simon Mitchell Hill. Welcome now, the highlights of the weekend in second division. Fev came out and he kicked nine against Devon Meadows to keep Hastings Finals hopes alive. Karingle dropped their first game of the season against Seaford. Langwarren killed some of those finals chances with a 43-point smashing. And King Curtis, he kicked eight to help his mighty Seagulls stay a game clear in third position, having won five in a row. Well, let's welcome our guests and firstly we say good evening to Sean Foster. Now, Sean, you're keeping as close an eye on the cricket as you are in talking to us tonight. It's been a very poor start by the Aussies. Two for ten and Hanscom's just survived a review as well. So we're in diabolical trouble, aren't we? Not a good, not a, oh, this is working down. Not a good start, Dan. Um, yeah, we're, uh, what are we, two for, two for ten, so hopefully they can have a little rebuild, but it seems to be the... Uh, yeah, the bowlers at the moment, isn't it, mate? Uh, Trent Bolt last night ripped through the ripped through the top order of the, the Indians, and we're looking like we're going down the same path. So hopefully it turns around, mate. We've had a little bit of a bogey here at the Footy Club. We're here watching the last uh, last few World Cup games of the World Cup, and every time we seem to watch the Aussies bat, we just lose wicket after wicket after wicket. So hope it turns, mate. Well, we better get through it quickly so we can all get home and hope Australia make runs if, if Chelsea is the bogey here. But as I say, it's wonderful to be here. But your footy club's flying. Uh, you've been absolutely outstanding having, having won your past five. What do you put your good form down to? Um, oh, look, it's, it's, probably, it's probably just getting, like, getting good numbers out, out on the park, really. Like we're, we've had a few injuries. Um, we've slowly um, basically got everyone back on the track. Um, look, I think... Um, yeah, look, it probably comes down to Brainy, really. Um, Brainy's been, since my young work at the back, Brainy's been outstanding. Um, just, I guess, real simple messages. Um, and we've been executing them. And look, take away the first two losses of the season, Lang Warren and Karingal. Um, we obviously had the big slip up against Red Hill. Um, but we, yeah, other than that, we haven't lost a game. So we're winning the ones we should win. Um, and we're just slowly, just, you know, a lot of new players this year. So we're slowly just. Week by week, starting to you know, get the hang of playing with each other, and I think you know, we're starting to build into that now. I think the beauty about Division 2 as well is the last probably month, the gaps closed from Red Hill and uh, Karingal to sort of you guys, Lange and Seaford coming in, and you're not far away from, from those top sides, which is pretty exciting coming in. So I think about a month and a half ago, we always thought it was a two, or we all thought it was a two horse race. But they're really well, coming did, back to the field. Dan, Dan thought it was one horse race. Oh, yeah. He thought the Red Hill was that, that, that far in front. But, to, Shawnee, like, to, to get people back on the track, and, and like yourself and, and Curtis, who are back starting to get a bit of fitness under their belt, that's going to help you in good stead for the latter half of the year. Because I mean, you weren't here last year, but at the end of the second half of last year, you had a lot of injuries to your back half. And you limped into the finals? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, at being Hastings last year, we we played Chelsea in the, I think it was the last game of the season. Um, it ended up unfortunately costing the club the, the double chance. But the same the same time, the, the personnel that was missing that day, um, key defenders, key forwards. Um, so as, as as you touched on, yeah, we've I Ruckman. think we yeah the Ruckman. I think we we bought a lot of new players in this year. Um, and it doesn't just click straight away sometimes, as we'd all know. So I think we're, oh. just, we're just slowly getting to that. We've lost another one, Dan. We've lost another one. Yep. Uh, we're slowly getting to, you know, I guess you want to peak at the right time of the year. And I believe we, hopefully we can do so. You know, we've, we've got some, um, yeah, we've got some sort of key players returning in some good form. So. Now, just before we have a look at uh, what Hastings have been doing, your old team, Sean, just want to ask Simon a question. Simon, you've been here three years. Uh, you had an interesting experience under Jason Ackermanis. What was it like being coached by Anker and did it prepare you for uh, football at the highest level or football at the next level? Uh, yeah, so Anker was a yeah, fantastic coach. Um, Grand Line medalist, um, just knew so much about football. Like, um, 
I kind of learned like everything I really know today really underneath Acker, which is really wealth of knowledge. Um, he does does love a spray. He will spray every single person on the on the bloody footy team. But other than that, he's yeah, he's a fantastic coach for me. So how different is Brainy to uh, Jason Ackermanis, chalk and cheese? Uh, well, actually, one of the things that got me to this club was I wanted to ask Brainy. He's like, do you guys spray the players a lot? And Brainy's like, no, we don't at all. And then bloody first training, here's Brainy spraying everyone. <laughs> so uh, he's pretty similar, but not too bad. Not as bad. <laughs> Definitely not as bad. <laughs> Let's have a look at Hastings, which of course is Sean's old mob, thanks to x -Golf, one of our uh, very valued sponsors at Game Face as part of our coverage on the MP NFL. Fev came out, boys. He kicked nine goals against Devon Meadows to keep Hastings' finals hopes alive. And their last five, they've won three, they've lost two. And still to come, uh, Red Hill, Devon Meadows, of course, which they've played. And then they've got Tyab, Rye, Chelsea, Seaford and Somerville. They're still right in the mix Blackers and also Hawks to play in the finals. The Blackers, there'll be no um, Favola this week due to a heel injury. Yeah, look, Hastings are thereabouts, but I just don't think that they've got what the top five sides have got. I think their bottom six isn't as strong as the, the top five. So I think Hastings will be thereabouts, and, and look, they'll win three or four of those games on the way home. But I don't think that they'll make it. I think the top five is settled, um, just the positions will change. I think the win from Seaford on the weekend really threw everything apart, didn't it? It just established them as a real finals contender and sort of Hastings still haven't had that really big win against one of those top fives that's sort of established themselves. Sean, sure, you got a few close mates still down at Hastings because you played in the Premiership side and the Brendan Dunn who's doing great things with Coringal at the moment, lost just the one game for the season. Have you got a sense, speaking to maybe Ricky Ferrara and a few of the other boys down there about how they reckon they're travelling? Yeah, no, I speak to Rick almost on a daily basis. He's one of my best mates. So. Um, I, I reckon I'll make it. I reckon Hastings will make it. I think, um, obviously, Fev seems to have ankle and heel injury, but I think Fev seems to be a little bit more on board for this back half of the year. And you know, I think a lot of us do forget how good Brendan Favola was. Oh. He's the you know, best player in the comp in the AFL for a couple of years. So you stick him down in the goal square on a local football defender, and no offence to Simo. But, you know, this guy was an unbelievable footballer. So now I reckon Hastings, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of, they've got some really good young kids coming through there. Who, who do you think out of the top five will drop out then? I don't want to. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm that's gonna, that's I'm not going to sit on the fence. You're going to call it. Nah. Don't sit on the fence. Nah. Must be safe. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to call it, but I, I honestly reckon Hastings will get in there. What do you think, Simon, about Brendan Favola? Did you play on him earlier in the year? And if you did, how did you find him? Uh, I didn't play on him um, at the start of the year, Reese did, but he just left, so I think I'll have him in two weeks. I did, I had played on him back in the old end, um, kept him goalless for 10 minutes, so a bit of a proud thing for me. Yeah. Ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> what sort of what, what was it like playing on him? And I mean, why why was he why is he so good? Obviously, he's a very smart player. I mean, he would have been in the tail end of his career then, and he's in the more of the tail end of his career now. If you can possibly be in the tail end of the tail end of your career, but uh, in his AFL days, he was very good at just staying within thirty metres from goal, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. I know when I played on him, he was just super strong. Like I tried to like even call him out a little bit, and he just like held me off. Like I couldn't even go near him. It's just his, just his hands are uh, like phenomenal. And he's like quite, if he gets, gets the ball, he's gonna grab it. He's quite quick over the first. He's quite quick over the first ten metres, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I think that's about as far as he runs these days, though, doesn't he? <laughs> I don't think he needs to worry too much. Now he is out this week, though. Looking at Coringal, they did drop their first game for the season against Seaford. There was a battle between Kemble, the fullback of Seaford, against Mark Holt. Holt kicked two seven, one out of bounds on the full. Uh, our intrepid reporter, Reese de Groon, wrote a terrific article where he said um, Seaford put a halt on Holt, as I say, kicking 2-7 and 1 out of bounds on the full. The comment from Kemble is an experienced campaigner. He's been to my barber. I was pretty excited for it because I haven't played on him since we were both kids. And uh, Bryce Lloyd, boys, did a, a very good job on Michael Burke. Uh, Coringle's form, of course, four in a row. In fact, they've won everything. And their first loss was to Seaford. Was it the loss, Holtz? that they needed to have. Oh, you never like to lose, but we, we sort of mentioned that, but they got Red Hill this week, so um, yeah, well they've obviously had it now, but for Holt, he still has 10 shots on goal, he's still a huge effort. So still, if you see fit and you get the win, yeah, happy days, but Holt, he sort of gets a decent day in front of goal, and he puts you to the sword, doesn't he? 
Yeah, it just shows how even the competition is. And I, I think Seaford at home have been a very good and strong side this year. And, um, yeah, they'll, they'll be thereabouts. Oh, not, not Fozzie doesn't think so. No. <laughs> he thinks that they're going to drop out. Else. He thinks they're going. <laughs> nah, mate. <laughs> now, Simon, have you played on Mark Holt? He's a big boy, isn't he? Uh, no, I didn't play against Springer the last time. Um, looking forward to it next week. Yeah, he looks like a big boy. It just seems like as soon as he gets the ball, he's going to have a shot. So hopefully I can win in that. Now, thanks to SBT Performance, we've got uh, all our uh, sponsors on board tonight. We thank them very much for uh, looking after Game Face throughout our MPNFL coverage in Season 2019. Lang Warren killed Somerville's finals chances. Uh, maybe we, Brad Canavan, uh, would disagree with me. The coach of Somerville is a very, very competitive human being and uh, they probably, and the boys in this room might disagree, but they probably should have beaten Chelsea here a few weeks ago. But Lang Warren were too good for Somerville, winning by 43 points and uh, probably into their finals chances. But Sean, as I said, he did play them here a few weeks ago and it was one, I thought, at the end of the day, being here for that one, you're a bit lucky to win, but you found a way to win. They were almost four goals up against you in the wet. Yeah, correct. Now they, um, we know we know Wick, Wick's an ex-Chelsea man and he plays a real competitive, um, aggressive brand of footy. Um, but I was really impressed. I didn't play. I was on the bench with Dave and... Oh, we were really impressed by their attack on the footy and they were you know, really, really hard at it, almost intimidating to a degree. Like they were just head over the quarter gate. Um, but you know, you're right, we did. We probably stole that one, but I think you know, sometimes you know, good for us and a young side, good, good sides will find a way. They've got a really there. good balance of um, senior experience and, and youth. And young Roberts is a really good ruckman. Yep. Um, so they've, they've got a lot to like. And, up until the weekend, they, they hadn't been really touched up. They'd been right in every game. Yeah. And, and obviously, getting Hogenberg back as well. Like yeah, big, a, strong he's bullock. A, he's a, a, he's a, a fast player. Kamanis is, with Just him and him, ch ch rotating through the midfield. They've been very good. Yep. No, I've, yeah, I've, as I said, I think Wiggle he will disagree with you, mate, because um, we, we know what he's like. But they'll, uh, if they do miss out this year, I'd, I'd be really concerned about it for next year. Do you think that they'll make it as well, do you? Got the top seven young players. <laughs> 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 now, uh, we need to talk about Lang Warren because Shane Patterson was best on ground. Uh, they're going well, Blackers. Obviously, it's your influence when you, when you can turn up to training, when you're not out there fishing or looking after your landscaping business. But uh, they must be pretty happy with the way they're travelling at the moment. Yeah, on, on the weekend, it was a really good first half of the, of the game and there was nothing in it. But I reckon it was one of Lang Warren's best quarters for the year kicking nine goals down at Somerville. And Somerville is a very hard ground to, to win at. And to do that, we, they really set the game up really well in that, in that third quarter, kicking nine goals. A good time to hit form too, your next three weeks for Lange. Is it um, obviously the boys this week and then it's Coringle Red Hill, I think. Is it? It's a three weeks. Yeah, they've got they've got Lang Warren, Coringal. Uh, yeah, they've got they've, yeah they've got a pretty tough run. Pearsdale over, over over the next few weeks. Pearsdale is the one that they should win. The other ones they might be 50-50, but uh, they're in pretty good form at the moment. Now I think Pearsdale are in the mix to make the I think Pearsdale are in the mix to make the five as well. Fozzie, are they? According to Fozzie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we're going we're going the NBA style. Correct. A couple of they're, conferences. They're making it tough for you, Sean, aren't they? Um, yeah. Now, let's look at Chelsea's performance, thanks to Ambience Catering and the King, King Curtis. His form in recent weeks has been sensational. Saw him kick five the other week. He got four the week after. Uh, he got eight on the weekend to help his mighty Seagulls stay a game clear in third position. Uh, He's just one of the reasons. We don't want his head to get too big, Simon. He's just one of the reasons why you've been in good form in recent weeks, isn't he? Well, he actually um, airballed me the ball in the forward line and I shanked the kick, so it should have been nine. Um, yeah, he's been just working into a good patch of form recently. Don't you realise when you're a defender, and I was the worst footballer of all time, you just stay as a defender? Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing up there, that's why I missed it. I was never going to get a shot at it again, I don't think. Now, Sean, we hear that he might have a new woman on the side. Is he still the king? <laughs> I was, I was considering muting myself for this segment. But, uh, yeah, we've got the Queen on the scene now. The Queen, the Queen has arrived, and ever since the Queen started coming to watch games, the King's been kicking goals, Dan. He's, uh, I think he's going four, five, five and eight, so she can keep coming. She's does, great. Does the, queen, does the Queen have a name, Sean? Renee. Renee. 
Queen Renee and King Curtis. Royalty of the Chelsea Footy Club. There we go. The next five for uh, Chelsea, Lang Warren, Coringal, Hastings, Ryan, Dever Meadows. You've won your last five. You're in great form, Simon. Why do you think you can keep the good form going and, and get that all-important double chance, which, of course, you missed out on last year? Well, I think we're just playing a lot of good footy at the moment. And um, the two losses we did lose to Lang Warren and Coringal, they weren't by too much. So I think we're kind of a little bit more settled as a team now and we can kind of just go ahead and kick some, kick some more goals and, yeah, get on top. Can I just mention two guys as a talking point? On uh, Tuesday night, I was lucky enough to go to Crew Point and host a function uh, for one of the all-time greats uh, in AFL coaching. And he doesn't like people uh, blowing, as he would say, something up his backside, blowing wind Wind. up his backside. Yeah, he doesn't like it too much. But I was uh, delighted to interview the great Alistair Clarkson at a function at Crew Point on Tuesday. Name Name dropping again. No, no, I'm just saying that I thank Crew Point for the opportunity. And I'll tell you what, there was not, as, as we have tonight, everyone seems transfixed by us. There must have been a crew point on Tuesday. There was not one person that was not watching Alistair Clarkson. He was just absolutely sensational. And that is why Black is the Hawks are in a very, very good space at the moment with that man in That was the biggest out-of-context name drop I've ever seen. <laughs> but I just thought you'd throw that in there. It's wonderful for Cribby to, to do that oh, sort of thing. it's great, Tony. Yeah, and years fantastic. ago, Alan Jeans was very good at doing those local club, wasn't he, Dan? He was. Tom, Tom Hayden was another one who was superb as well. I mean, uh, everyone just watched him and just absolutely loved him. Now, looking at the tips, because this Ooh. is important for me, boys, because Dan wins the clean sweep. Now, Dan could not tip his hat normally, but I've got them all right because I actually picked Seaford to beat Karingal. Uh, the boys with the ugly heads on the right-hand side or, or a little bit uglier than me on the left-hand side. Uh, in Blackers and Holtz, they went for Karingal. It was the only one they got wrong. But uh, I'm very happy about that. We thank Gali Trophy Centre for providing our tips as we head into a very important round of football. Just before we get there, uh, courtesy of SBT Performance, looking at the run home. Now, uh, Hastings to come. Our work experience boy has got them winning matches against Tyab and Rye. Got them losing to your boys, guys, Chelsea and have got 50-50 against Seaford and Somerville. If they win those two matches, they'll be 40. If they win the two 50-50s, they'll finish on 48. So that'll be interesting. I think you can almost uh, write Somerville out of the picture now. So we'll move down to Seaford, and I think they're they're looking pretty good. Uh, um, They're they're going beautifully at the moment. Uh, Actually, uh, they've got 50-50 games coming up against Somerville and Lange. having trouble reading for the screen, I must be getting old boys. Uh, I've got the meeting crew point, uh, also having a 50-50 against Hastings and having a win against Rye, so 44 points if the wins come through, 52 if the 50-50s come through, and Lang Warren, uh, 52 points if the 50-50s come through against Chelsea, Seaford and Coringal. Uh, they'll beat Piersdale and uh, the work experience boy does a great job, uh, has got them having a loss against Red Hill. How do you see that going, Blackers and Hawks, in regard to the last few rounds of the season? And you reckon Somerville's out of it? Maybe it was Lange who uh, Fozzie was talking about. Yeah, no, it's it was. Because yeah. you've got a really tough run on the way home there, Lange. No, no, Very no, tough. No, no. We got the top four sides. We're in the gun for Saturday, mate. Yeah, yeah and that's, they, they certainly have. But Hawks, I think um, I think Somerville are two games and percentage out. Um, yes, they've got a fairly good run home. Yeah, I think so. I think at the start of the year we tipped those as the top five, and I'm That's still right. sticking with them, Dan. I just got news through on the live feed that Fev uh, is playing a tie up this week. Yep. Great well, news. The, the, the information we, I had from Stuart earlier was that he had a heel and he was unlikely, but well, he's obviously he's coming through. He's going to play now. He's going to play. But his heel must be okay. Thank you, Stuart, for looking after us there. He's um, healed. He's, 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 he's healed. He's healed. Healed. He's healed up. Yeah. You look good on camera too, Dan. Let's have a quick look at you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Frank, <laughs> Frank Sinaris, our goal kicking. Mark Holt leading on 56. So I didn't hear what the crowd had to say. Then I'll ignore that. Two goals to Mark Holt to go to 56. Aaron Walton having an outstanding year. He's not out of the running to win the goal kicking. Three goals to go to 48. He's playing on Aaron Walton's song. What number is he? 30. 30, He's one of the smaller forwards. No. Nah. But I think he plays on talls and small things, so. Oh, I generally do, but no, I didn't play on him that day. Jonathan Ross, five a couple of weeks ago, but he hasn't, he didn't kick a goal last match. 
and didn't play last week, so he remains on 44. Big game, though, this week against Coringal. Curtis Bywater. Here comes the king. He kicked eight on the weekend to go to 36. Ryan Gillis of uh, Somerville, the G-man, kicked four to go to 36. And Harry Larwell, well, uh, he's still going pretty well for a bit. Hill. He remains on 33. Our tips, gentlemen, will go across the board here. Thanks to Swiss Locker, Tyab hosting Hastings. Who do you like, Holtz? Uh, Tyab were very disappointing last week. Uh, with Fev back in this side this week, I reckon Hastings will be up this week. What do you think? Yeah, I'll be. I'll, just while we're on Hastings, I'll just make a quick shout out to um, Mick Hooper from the Hastings Footy Club. He's doing it really tough with um, MND at the moment, so um, he's a struggle to find a nicer bike in footy. So we're thinking of your hoops and um, look, yeah, hopefully you can get on the bed soon. So. Good on you. I'm with Hastings. Yeah, I'm with Hastings as well, Simon. Uh, Hastings. Blaggers? Yeah, I don't think Hastings can afford to lose this one, and Hastings for me. They've been a little bit disappointing, Ty. They'll be looking to uh, at least be more competitive. Now, Chelsea and Lang Warren, this is an absolute test you, Dan. One of the matches of the round here at Chelsea. It is uh, third against fourth. We've got first again. We've just got the best round of footy in first division and second division. Top four playing each other in first division. Sixth and seventh in first division. And the top four in second division. It's an absolute belt of holes. This will really test you because usually wherever we go, you just pick the home team religiously. <laughs> I'm going for Chelsea. I think oh, that's really? That's a surprise, Dan. Thanks for that. That's a very big surprise. That's exactly I'm, what just I'm, pulling, I'm just pulling the splinters out of my backside, but I still think Chelsea can win. No, I think home ground advantage, I think Chelsea can Sean, win this Sean, week. Sean's my mate. He's happy with me. Simon's my mate. He's happy with me. Why will you, why, why will you win, Simon? And how much will you win by? Uh, I think it'll be close, but I think we'll win, we'll win by about 15. Um, goals? Yeah, 15 goals. <laughs> Uh, I just back in our back line. We'll be able to keep him to a low score. So. Who are you expecting? <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Right. Who are you expecting to play on? Uh, I think I'll have that. Jesse, is it? Jesse Murphy. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe. Good to see you've done your homework. Oh, well, well, I've got time before training, but I'm trying to ignore it for the minute. Really fine him up there. Okay. okay. <laughs> Very good. Thanks. Uh, what do you reckon, Flaggers? I reckon on the weekend, like there's a lot of wind and rain around, and the side that makes the, the most of their opportunities will win the game down. Yeah, so who's that going to be, Tone? Yeah. Who is it going to be? I know you're uh, on the Lang Warren coaching yeah. stuff, but you can. Oh, and I, and I, I know you want Lang Warren to win, but I mean, it's a oh, real game for them. He's isn't not going to tip Chelsea, Dan. He's yeah. not going to tip Chelsea. Well, you think, yeah, but Dan, that's all I think. I think. I think both sides are evenly matched. I think the conditions will really be tough on the weekend. And the side that makes the most of their opportunities will win the game. Who's going to suit? Close Who are the weight conditions going to suit, do you think? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You guys go right in the wet? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just the, the, the side that adapts quickest will uh, generally go, go the best. Nice answer, mate. Well done. We're not going very well here regarding any tipsy, but I'll take Chelsea. Chelsea. I'll take Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll go for Lane. Of course you will. And the other boy's going for Chelsea. Devon Meadows and Pearsdale. Uh, De Devon Meadows at home will win that. They've both been pretty disappointing this year. I know Neil Craig's trying to change the culture of the club, and he said it'll take a bit of time, and it is taking a bit of time. Yeah, they've both been a little bit stinky this year, haven't they? Um, both have been a little bit disappointing, but it's a good chance to get the four points, but uh, I think. Devon have been a little stinkier less than the two, so I think Devon will beat Pearsdale. I think so. What do you reckon, Sean? Yeah, I think so. I think De um, Pearsdale, are, they're just a young, a young group that are going to take a few years. They, at least they play a pretty attacking ground. They try to put the ball through the middle of the ground, so they'll come good. Devon um, Devin have got a bit too much class, leaving Bungarder and Fletcher through the middle. What do you think, Sean? Oh, yeah, I think Devon Meadows, Meadows win that one. And just a question for you, the standard of footy in this comp compared to the others at Murray League, which of course took on the MP NFL in the interleague earlier in the year. I mean, it has a reputation as a good comp, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, it does. It's um, pretty good footy. Uh, the good thing about it up there is there's just no wind or rain, so it's pretty, pretty good skills in that up there. So. And uh, what, the grounds are a little yeah. bit bigger or similar? Or? Uh, yeah, the grounds are a bit bigger, yeah, a little bit lusher, so yeah, yeah. just a, bit, a little bit more space up there to kind of run around, which is good. What do you reckon in this one, Blankets, between Devon Meadows and Pearsdale? Well, I think both clubs will be really disappointed with their years so far, Dan. And but I think at home, Devon Meadows will win. Yeah, as I said, I think Devon Meadows will win. Seaford and Somerville. Seaford at home, they just need to continue their good form against Coringal. I would think they, they can win this. Uh, it won't be easy. It never is against Somerville. We'd be disappointed about last week. What do you reckon, Simon? 
Uh, I think some of it might be a chance there. They played really well against us. Um, I really liked their midfield and they had a couple of good forwards, so I reckon, I reckon some of it. Yeah, they're very close that day in very tough conditions. It's going to be quite wet too on Saturday, which uh, might certainly help some of it. Yeah, it certainly will. Like I said earlier, I think some of will have been in every game um, and they'll be very hard to beat. And, and last week, Seaford had a really good outstanding win, so they might have a letdown, Dan. Yeah, I still think Seaford can win. Chris. Yeah, it's a big test of character for some of all, obviously, with the letdown. Uh, but Seaford, that'll give him a lot of confidence going into the back half of the season. So I, I think that Seaford will get the points on this one. Yeah, I'm a Seaford as well. I think they've, yeah, too much to play, too much to play for. Um, ever since that second half against us, they've been striking with a pretty hot iron. So yeah, I'll be watching out for them. Good analogy. As I said, there was a, uh, a great feeling at Crip Point on Tuesday with Alistair Clarkson there, and uh, they'll be cock hoop when they take on Rye, trying to introduce some of the uh, ideas that he brought to the club on Tuesday in a packed house in the club rooms, in the social club rooms. Rye looking for three in a row, Blackets, and uh, they'd be quite happy if they could get that win. They would go in as favourites, but it's often been an issue for Rye, hasn't it? Winning those matches, they're expected to win. Yeah, I think so. And look, we spoke to Adam Kirkwood last week and he was understanding that they just needed to have a little bit more depth in the, into their club. So I think that he'll be happy with their run home and they have got some games that they should win and bank and I think that this is one of them. He was very impressive last week, wasn't he, Adam? Very impressive. Very impressive. He's done a good job with them, I reckon. Yeah, yes, and that was a great win from them last week and uh, they should be able to continue on and make it a couple in a row. What do you think, Simon? Uh, I think Riley too strong. Sean? Yeah, Ryan, Ryan, Dan. I, I, like, I like what Crimea are doing, though. I think Wonderful, they've, isn't they've, it? Yeah, they've, you know, your Davidsons and Harrington have been the, you know, the stars for how many years. They've just, you know, Harrington's sort of playing more off half-back and teaching the kids, and Davo's sort of getting out across half-forward and doing the same. So I can, yeah, they're on the right track. And I, I, think, and I think with what Stevie Hamill, Andrew Brady are doing down there, Andrew Gilmore, they've really brought a good culture to the club, and I know it's going to take time, but they're putting it, um, something in place, to, uh, that's what I think. And we did do an interview with Alistair Clarkson, which will go up on the Game Face website oh, in the next couple of days. When did you do it? Oh, on Tuesday night. Just had to get that in, so I'm looking at yeah, your I haven't got that one before yet. Yeah. <laughs> What did you do on Tuesday night, Dan? I went down and hosted a function, and Alistair oh, Clarkson was the guest speaker. Oh, One of the highlights of my career, Blake. Thank you very much for mentioning that. Now, Red, Red Hill and Karingle, uh, this is the match of the day, and you'll hear it on Game Face. Myself and Chris Holcomb broadcasting. I haven't broadcast with a big fellow in a game of footy on Saturday. Don't dominate uh, Holtz, otherwise I'll turn your microphone off. I'm sure you won't. Uh, but we're looking forward to it. Uh, look, I think Red Hill will win. But uh, Karingle beat the last time round, and um, you never know. I can't wait for this one. I reckon that um, Karingle, just talking to a couple of people out of that camp, it's going to be a very, very physical game. I reckon. Ready to get to the outside. The wet weather's going to suit Karingle. Yes, we um, Just as long as they can't get it to the outside, Red Hill, but I reckon they're going to come at them with everything Karingle and give them a bit of a touch up. I'll be old school for a little bit there. Simon? Uh, I think. If it is wet, it'll be a little bit closer, but I still think Red Hill. They just, when we played them, they were just phenomenal, so yeah, I'd back them in. Dan, Dan said that day you guys look, will just like witches' hats. That's what he Dan did say. I didn't say that. You did say that. Say that. He, he said, said that they were just Chelsea like witches' hats, <laughs> and Red Hill were the best side in the two divisions. In the whole comp. I did say Red Hill were the best side on the peninsula, because I just love the way, and, and Sean, I know you got injured that day, but you can, I hope you can bat me up here all... Or no, throw me under the bus like the other boys have. Simon has it, but Blackers and uh, Holt certainly have. But I thought their ability to use the footy out of the back line, chip, 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 45 degree, and then hitting a target was unbelievable. There's nothing you guys could do about it. No, that, that's right. They've, it's been happening for... The, their, their standard of footy has got better and better every year. Like under, under Blackers a couple of years ago, they always had great skills. They held onto the footy. They made it. You had to try to get it off them. And it was a high possession, high risk style of footy. Um, and they've added some class to that now, on top of sort of what Black has built there. And um, yeah, look, yeah, I'm not going to say we're witches hats, but that was so impressive. They, Dan it, did. It was, it was the I best. I didn't say it either. Dan Come on, did. Dan. He no, said no, it. Just speaking, to, speaking to Jamie and, and Jonah, it's the best footy they believe they've played all year. Um, yeah. And unfortunately, we were on the receiving end. So yeah, I think, as, as I said, it's what Black... Black has sort of built there for three or four years, and now they've just added some real, real classy players. And it's almost like a, 
a standard VFL. Like when you, you're playing in the forward line there, they're, they're back six, they talk so well in the air. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty impressive, mate. It's going to be uh, a terrific game, but I just think Red Hill have got a little bit more talent. What do you, what do you think, Blake? Well, the, the big loss for Coringal at the moment is Matt Stanley and, and Robinson. They, they haven't played the last few weeks, and, and they did another avenues to goal. Um, I think if they're playing, then they're more of a chance to kick a score. But if they're just relying on Holt to kick their score, I think that Red Hill up and Red Hill are always a four to five goal better side. I'm going to tip an upset this week. I reckon that the wet weather, if it gets too nasty up there, I reckon that they'll go really hard at them. And I reckon it'll be a low scoring game. And I reckon Coringal might upset Red Hill up there. And we say good evening to Todd Gardner. Good evening, Todd. Good luck on the weekend. As Todd goes home, he's got things to do. But uh, So it should be a terrific game of footy. We, uh, As I say, it's our match of the day on Saturday on Game Phase. So, boys, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Sean, you go and watch the cricket now. Australia lost three early wickets, so a bit of a battle out there. And Alex Carey's gone up the order, which I think is the right thing to do. Um, me and Holtz were just discussing how much of a rock star Carey is at the moment. We're just hoping not to put the uh, moz on him, but... He's in good touch, mate. He's striking the ball well, so get him up there. I called Smith to get 100 yesterday, so watch out. I reckon they still put a couple of hundred on. We'll be all right. Would have you uh, brought Matthew Wade into the team ahead of Glenn Maxwell? Good, uh, good Casey South Melbourne man, Wade. He is. He is, <laughs> he is yeah. You, yeah. Play, you played with him for a little while, didn't you? I played a couple of games with him, yeah. Talking of names. Talking of names. Talking of names. Robbing G. He wouldn't have known my name, though, Dan. So, Clark, I would have known yours, I reckon, mate. Uh, no, he didn't. I had to introduce myself. He did at the end of the night. They called me Dan, so I was quite happy about that. Thanks, Sean, for joining us. Thanks, Simon, for being part of the show tonight. Are you having an outstanding year, the 2017 Best and Fairest? Round of applause for our guests tonight. We thank the Chelsea Football Club for having us. We thank them for being out there. And good luck on the weekend, Chelsea. Get your game face on. Rob Morrison, I'm General Manager of the Frank Sinara We are located on 183 Cranbourne Road, which is right above Jubilee Park. We are a RSL which obviously has two parts to business, which is the commemorative welfare side of it and the commercial side of the business. We in the commercial side look after many things here in the way of food options, beverage options, entertainment, gaming, TAB and Kino and we are a very successful club in the region. We're a community club, community orientated. We look after community, we employ 120 local people and we get a lot of support from within our 15,000 members that we have here and we continue to grow each year in motion of doing some more development which will increase those options including a cafe and a food truck. We also are very big in functions and entertainment. We supply a lot of major acts, plus we do a lot of functions for sporting clubs and community clubs. Great staff, we have an enormous culture here and have something on every day. We've sponsored YCW since 2007. We got involved with them because the fact that they were down in Jubilee Park, which is right near us, and we also sponsor the Frankston Peninsula Cricket Club and the Netball Club from Jubilee Park and we feel that it's a, a, a very close-knit group between a lot of us so it was one of the main reasons but also they're a very good um, community club. We look forward to anybody visiting our club. <laughs>